Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video we're discussing Book 3 in the Instinct series. This series is written by James Patterson and Howard Rowan. Book 3 is called Steel. It was published in 2022, so it's a new book. It's a really good read. Again, this series is proving to be just a great series to read, and I recommend it for anybody. It's a great thriller series, so if you like thrillers, I think you'll like these books. And once again, this book takes us to a whole different journey than the previous two books in the series, so the series is always remaining fresh. Once again, like the first two books, the start of this book has a really good hook. It grabs you straight away, and again, like the other two books, it doesn't let go. The pace is pretty good all through the book. I found it slightly slower than the first two books in the series, but it's still good enough to keep you engaged and keep you just wanting to read more and more, and those pages just seem to turn themselves. And again, we've got those short chapters that work so well for James Patterson. The start of the book is a rich college student. His father is like a billionaire. He's at a house by himself and he's waiting for someone to arrive, for a woman to arrive. What we do find out is somebody else turns up by surprise, somebody he's not expecting. And then it goes from there. And he's forced to fake his death. And we don't know at that stage whether they've killed him but everybody suspects that he's committed suicide. This boy's father doesn't believe he's dead. So he approaches Dylan. So now we've got our character Dylan back. Approaches Dylan because he's heard about him and the, his activities in his past in the CIA and also how he helped solve two big crimes recently. You know, the crimes in first two books. He wants Dylan to find his son. He doesn't believe he's dead. What we also find out is a painting has gone missing, a very expensive painting, and it's also a stolen painting. So this guy, this rich guy, doesn't want the police involved. So that's why he's roping in Dylan, and he's doing it in a very sneaky way, and ends up that Dylan can't say no. So we've got Dylan on the case, and then he finds a way to get Elizabeth on the case as well. So we have our dynamic duo back again, working on the same case. And of course we have to because the series has to be about them both. If it's not, why have the books in the series in the first place? I can't give away anything else that happens in the plot in this video. There are some really key twists that happen quite early on, and if I give those away, it's going to spoil the rest of the read. And this being quite a new, a new book, published this year, 2022, there's bound to be some people out there who haven't read it yet. What I will say, though, is some of our characters, our side characters, from the first two books do make a reappearance and of course Julianne comes back and like I said in the video for book two wherever Julianne is in this series it's bound to be a fun scene again he's so fun so vibrant so energetic his dialogue the way he interacts with other characters everything is so good about him and again I'm gonna say it I wish that Julianne would have his own series I think he'd be a great character in his own series. He's just got that charisma, and, and I think he'll be a great central character. There's so much more about him, I think, that the authors could develop. He'd have a great history, a great backstory, and I think there'd be enough scenarios and situations to put him in to make it entertaining. Just like the other two books in the series, there's not much filler in this story. It's very entertaining, very engaging, or keep you reading non-stop. It did for me anyway. I won't mention the characters I've spoken about in the first two videos on this series because I feel the same way about each of those characters, so I don't want to repeat myself. The first character I'll talk about in this video is Tracy, and Tracy is Dylan's husband. The reason I want to talk about Tracy in this video is that he's brought into the story so much more, and he's given so much more life in the story and he's dragged into the investigation himself as well. So they make him impersonate an art dealer. And that was really interesting because you see a character go out of their element, thrown into a situation where it's not safe. They don't even know if they're going to survive and they're willing to do that. I found that 
scene really engaging and really thrilling. And I'm so glad that they made those twists in the novel for this character, because otherwise the character could have just been a little bit in the background too much all the time and a little bit stale, boring for the reader. I'm really glad that we saw more of Tracy and we saw different sides as well in this book. The second character I want to talk about is Matthias Van Osen. Now he's the rich guy in this novel, the one who drags Dylan into the investigation about his son and about the painting. He's interesting because even though there are so many parts that just seem like a stereotype, there are other parts that a little bit more complex and different as well. So he has those stereotypical parts where he thinks money drives anything. You know, he can tell anybody to go anywhere, do anything. That he's very obnoxious and very opinionated and everybody's at his beck and call. So you find that that's a bit of a stereotypical character traits for a rich person in some novels. But the parts that are more interesting are his sense of humour. He's got a very dry sense of humour, he's very witty. And he doesn't mind kind of playing with his dialogue with some characters. We have a bit of back and forth between him and Dylan at certain parts of the novel. And I found that really interesting. And there's also a scene with a car with him in it. And I do like that scene, particular scene in this novel. I thought that was very well written and kind of very inventive for this character, throwing him into that action. This character did surprise me because there was more to it than I thought would have been in this book. This book was nearly perfect for me. There's a couple of, of minor things that I didn't enjoy so much, but so minor that it didn't make much difference at all to the read. I rate this a 4.5 out of 5. I so wish that I could rate it a 5. Maybe the next in the series, if they do write another one, and I hope they do, Maybe that book will be a five-star read. But this book is so close to being a perfect book. Everything about this series is ending up being so great. The characters, the action, the pace of the book, just the whole plot structure, the storylines, how each book is so different. Everything about this series is so good, and every book just is so fresh. It just makes you want to read more in the series, and I hope to hurry up and publish the next one in the series. I do review other James Patterson novels on my channel, and I will review more in the future. If you don't want to miss out on those, check out my channel and subscribe. I also have a thriller playlist on my channel. Check that out as well. It should be on your screen now.